Hello and welcome to a very special B1M video. We are joined by Andrew Wolstenholme, who is Chief Executive of London's Crossrail programme. Thank you so much for being with us, Andrew. Um, I feel like I could talk to you for, for hours, but I suppose starting, starting at the beginning with a bit about your background, how did you go from starting out to playing a leading role in projects like Peterhouse Terminal 5 and, and the Crossrail programme? Well, first of all, thank you for having me on your, on your web. Um, Oh gosh, this goes back a long way. I guess as a young child I was fascinated by how things worked. I suppose my grandfather, who was a civil engineer and architect, my mother an architect, my father an architect, I was surrounded by people who created <laughs> things and made things work and made things happen. So I studied civil engineering at university. I actually decided to go into the army. Um, I drove tanks, I commanded a troop of tanks, ended up as a captain, um, but decided that I actually wanted to end up building things, creating things delivering things for society, more than I wanted to serve in the army as a career. So I joined that fabulous organization called Arab um, as a young consulting engineer. I actually found life quite difficult, having served in the army, having had a team, my own team of around 80 people. And I very quickly wanted to move beyond the pure design stage and into a part of the industry that you could manage, you could lead, you could create, and you could make a real difference. And so I suppose my early days um, having left the army in engineering, um, was designing bridges. Uh, I, I worked in um, North America for a year in that great city, Chicago, that attracted in the um, early 20th century, um, in fact, the early 19th century, fantastic European architects, pioneers, engineers. They built taller buildings, faster buildings, and that for me was such an insightful year to understand how buildings works, how you could work with the great North American architects, how you could deliver a fantastic product over a life cycle was really instrumental. And from um, being a young graduate, uh, then a young engineer in Arab, slowly built up, I think, my reputation about being comfortable leading teams of people, got involved in bigger and more complex programs. And my 13 years in Arab then resulted in me moving having spent five of those in Hong Kong, um, delivering, um, again, some wonderful pieces of infrastructure in that um, busy, energetic Asia. Um, as a young professional engineer, the boundaries were almost limitless. So coming back to work for an organization called BAA, who were the British Airport Authority, they owned in that time seven UK airports, was a huge opportunity to step back from being a young professional engineer into someone who was taking on responsibility, I think gaining respect in the sector to be able to handle and lead larger and larger and more complex programs. So you're now leading the Crossrail program, which is one of the world's largest construction projects. It's taking place underneath and within one of the world's largest cities. What is it like to take something like that on and to have that level of responsibility every day? Well, it's fantastic. I think I have the best job in the sector. I don't think there's, a, <laughs> there's another one that beats this. Um, you know, here we are delivering a 14.8 billion pound railway program. It really matters to London. It involves people, it's complex. Um, I have to say we're on time. We're gonna deliver with inside our funding envelope. Uh, we're gonna deliver the most fantastic quality of new transport system for London, uh, and we're gonna do it safely. Um, what's it like taking on that responsibility? Look, I have learned over the years, I guess in my early army days, to understand how people and teams work, how the dynamics, how transformational output, how people respond and react to different environments. So my job as the chief executive is to create that environment here on Crossroad where people can deliver out of their skin, can, can come and work in an environment they enjoy working. We can bring the supply chains, the stakeholders, the politicians, the boards, the sponsors together. Everyone can win confidence in that what we're delivering is the right outcome. And from Crossrail's point of view, you know, here is a program that will deliver 10% more rail capacity in London when it's fully opened in 2019. A program that's gonna allow 1.5 million people to come within central London inside 45 minutes. A program that is much more than just a railway, that is gonna transform the way in which people tra uh, travel, move, um, interchange. Um, it's gonna affect the property world. It's gonna affect the whole of London. And what is so exciting about being a young civil engineer to someone who now leads big programs is that you can get involved in things like Crossrail. 
It really, really matters to London. It really matters to the South East. It really matters to the whole of the UK PLC. And that's what makes it so exciting and such a fantastic opportunity for a new generation in due course of, of engineers to follow. I mean, it's undoubtedly a complex program, but what would you say has been the greatest challenge of the Crossrail program so far? Oh, I think, I think there's so many. I mean, you know, if it wasn't challenging, I don't think I could retain and keep the team. It, it's, it's the challenge that actually makes people wake up in the morning, that, that makes them be part of more than just a nine to five job. But being able to design, plan and deliver 42 kilometres of tunnels under London, under historic London, the clay is 55 million years old. Um, there's a lot down there. That is a very, very complex part of the process. Um, I think delivering 10 new stations, all in historic parts of London, um, all close to commercial or residential or retail businesses, close to local communities, that's difficult. But the real challenge probably is, is to introduce the new technologies, is to convert that civil and structural space, those passenger station spaces, introducing new rolling stock, new technologies, allowing them to interface with existing legacy systems. So in the west of London, for instance, we go on to the Great West Line. To the northeast of London, we go on to the Anglin Line, both of which operate different technologies and different signaling systems. So bringing together these complex systems, bringing together all the different interfaces, all the different teams, all the different contracts, all the different parts of London's community, so that in December 2018, when we opened the central section, which is what we call stage three, this operates as a world-class railway. And I think it is, if this was just an individual project, it would be fairly simple, because it is a program of about 44 different projects, 129 different contracts, many different parts of this organization. It is a technology challenge, um, it is a organizational challenge, um, it's a delivery challenge, so many of those challenges. But I think, you know, the tunneling went very well. Uh, I think UK PLC is world class at tunneling and I'm very proud of my teams and of the suppliers who delivered that. Very proud of those people who are building the stations and very proud of the teams who are integrating those complex technologies to make sure that on day one for those passengers, for those 200 million passenger journeys a year, this is an exemplar and people around the world will say, Crossrail is the new benchmark. That is the way that you deliver, that you bring these technologies together, and that you manage supply chains for the future. This is a much broader question, um, and I ask you as, a, as an industry leader, looking at the wider construction industry, what do you think is the greatest challenge that our sector faces at the moment, and how do you think we could overcome it? Two of the biggest issues we have to tackle in the future, number one is the whole question of skills. Um, do we have the resources? And particularly in a post-Brexit environment where the likelihood is, is that we will rely less on imported skills in the future. So we have to have the right people um, to deliver a huge potential pipeline of infrastructure programs made up of economic and social infrastructure projects and private projects. 650 billion pounds sit on the current pipeline. And if you look at just one aspect of this, the, the, the ageing of our workforce, um, the lack of availability of resources, is that our workforce today has to be about 22% more efficient to simply build what is in that pipeline in the future. So there are two issues that come out of that. One is, I think, people and resource. And secondly, I think, is the productivity of the sector that we represent. On a slightly more positive note, what, yeah. do, you, what do you most love about construction and what's made you stay with this industry throughout your throughout your career? I think, you know, the word construction is all about building, but, but, but construction and this sector is much more about building things. Um, you know, we leave assets, we live the built environment, um, you know, Crossrail has an operating life of 120 years. Uh, what I'm doing is not just for today's um, uh, people and dynamic and, and politicians uh, and workforce uh, and population of London, this is, this is forever. And I continually tell people, um, who are entering this industry, that it is much more about social change affecting how people live, improving people's quality of life. And the way you do that is to create built assets, houses, schools, hospitals, social infrastructure, or economic infrastructure, which Crossrail is a part of, you know, roads, um, railways, um, airports, the things, the fabric of society. And I think, you know, wherever you 
look around the world. It is absolutely essential, the master plan of the nation that you live in, and the way in which government policy provides the opportunity for delivering the infrastructure that we all need is hugely important. And whether you are in the legal or the banking profession, whether you're in the design as an architect or an engineer or um, a specialist designer, whether you're in the supply chain as a specialist contractor, as a first tier, as a design consultant, or whether you own and operate assets, it is a huge reach across society. And construction is far too limiting a word to describe, I think, the world that we live in. And, and I have been really lucky in my career to be able to start off as a consultant with Arab, um, to go into an owner-operator of an airport in BAA, to work for a while um, in Balfour Beatty, part of the supply chain, and then come back as, as a client. And when you see this fantastic sector through all of those different lenses, it is hugely appealing. And right now, I think you know, one of the opportunities we have again is to export, um, despite the fact that we have lots of concerns and challenges in this sector. We are very diversified. Um, you know, we contain ourselves in too many small pots. We don't work across the whole um, ethos in, in, in one way. I think there's a huge opportunity to export what we do. You know, we are very good at design. We are very good at engineering. Um, Crossrail will be handed over twice, once as a physical asset and once as a digital asset. And the opportunity to create, I think, the export opportunities for what we are very good at in this industry. And, you know, some may view the fact that on a bit more digital engineering journey, we're still only at the foothills. I think actually there's a great opportunity if we can work across the boundaries of these great infrastructure projects to be able to pack that up and to deliver it once for our national industry and secondly overseas um, in an export market. On a similar theme and linking back a little bit to the skills gap you described earlier and the need to attract the best talent into the industry, what would you say to young boys and girls who are currently at school at the moment trying to work out what they want to do with their lives and potentially considering a career in our sector? Well, I spoke last week to um, two young ladies and two, two young gentlemen who are on work experience here at Crossrail. Uh, I have to say they are all phenomenally clever and talented. They seem to get much better grades than I did. Um, and I suppose what we're trying to do, them, do with them here is to give them the opportunity to, to work in a work environment, um, to take away for them their A-levels and to begin to understand how you them apply them in a business work environment um, and to just, just to dip them for a moment in time into the complexity um, of the world that Crossroad represents. But equally we spoke in this office about um, how Crossroad would affect London, the opportunities to go into lots of different parts of this sector and this industry. And I think that really helps them sort of identify and confirm that this is a very exciting sector. Um, it's much more than just engineering and architecture and building and commissioning. It is all about creating assets um, for society to be able to benefit from. And that excites them. And I think that what we've got to do is to turn this whole image of, of, of construction, of, of infrastructure, into one about, as I say, helping and understanding the outcomes. And those outcomes last generations in different societies in many different ways. The outcomes, incidentally, are also about how you build things. Um, and one of the, 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 the real um, pieces of work that I'm trying to focus on is as chairman of something called the Construction Leadership Council. And it is really important if the sector wants to improve beyond its current norms that we look, I think, at three aspects of um, what the sector does well. One is about defining better, more certain outcomes. That's what clients and consultants do. And those outcomes are the outcomes that last for their life cycle, over their, their life, and also the outcomes as to how you build things. So the first thing is better, more certain outcomes. And the Construction Leadership Council decided to, to, to focus on through the application of digital technologies, something we've just spoken about. The second one is about building it better. So this is using manufacturing to improve productivity. One of the things that I sort of mentioned about um, improving how this sector works. So applying off-site manufacturing, applying more manufacturing techniques. And the third piece is about through life performance. How do you get buildings to be more intelligent, to perform better over the life cycle, to have better outputs for the people who use them um, in terms of experience, 
um, and in terms of outcome. If it's a school, better education. If it's a hospital, better health care. If it's a transport system, then better journeys that connect you. So the three very simple things that we're trying to do for this sector, I think is going to be much more attractive to young people who join it. The sorts of people who go and work for Google or maybe Rolls-Royce should be attracted by the digital engineering, by the complexity, but about the outcomes that it provides, about the manufacturing opportunities. This isn't just about an industry that requires you to be outside, to get dirty, to go down you know, dusty tunnels. This is a work environment that I think should attract lots of young people in the future because it's exciting in terms of the outcomes it produces. There's an opportunity to export and to go overseas, and there's an, ex uh, there's an opportunity to make a real difference to the people and the societies that you touch. Andrew Orson, thank you so much for talking to us. Really appreciate thank you it. Very thank much. you. We hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you'd like to get more, you can subscribe free to the B1M.